Welcome back with a smiling face. Links to previous episodes are given in the video description, so don't forget to like, subscribe and share the video. The Shift of Shadows Episode 7 Jasper's POV You want to make an official alliance with me. It would have happened sooner or later. And this way, other packs in the area will know you're friends with. I guess that couldn't hurt. I sighed. You don't seem thrilled about it. Ben commented. I shrugged, a humorless laugh escaping me. It sounds immature, I know. I just wanted to do this right. And myself. I talk so much about what I would do for this pack, and the first day I call my father-in-law for help. I laughed again, shaking my head. Violet walked over to me, taking my hand. You really need to let that go Jasper. I'm proud of you for reaching out to my dad. This pack needs a lot of work. There's no way we could do it all by ourselves. Besides, how is this any different than being the son of an alpha? Garrett has gone through years of training for when he takes the position. You stepped into this role, not only not knowing who you really were, but with no previous training. She squeezed my hand tightly. And in one day, you've already given these people so much hope for the future. Don't think that doesn't count for anything. She's right son. Dimitri smiled. You've done amazing so far. Let's call this a speed bump that we'll go over together. Now, how about we get your beta and gamma? I nodded. All right. I reached out in the mind link for the first time. King, Ashwell. Alpha. Yes Alpha. Can you come up to my, ER, the office? On our way. I looked around, uncertain. You know, I think I might convert this into a storage space or something. I'm not comfortable using this as my office. I felt the same way. Vi said. Anne had an office. Most Lunas do. Dimitri explained. I converted an old bedroom for your mother. Annis was very, tacky. I doubt she ever sat in that chair, it was an antique, old as dirt. I sent most of the contents of that room to be sold already. We'll look around later, see what we can find in the way of a bedroom and offices. I smiled at her. Sounds good. She looked at her dad. How is everyone at home? You haven't been gone that long Violet. He smirked. They are fine. Your mom wanted me to tell you to charge your phone though. I guess she tried to call last night. They started chatting and I tuned out a little. Yes, I'd have to do a full sweep of the pack house. I had the strong idea that neither Violet or I wanted to stay in Warwick's old room. Goddess knew what I do with it though. The more I thought about it, the more I was straying from the idea of living in the pack house altogether. There were too many bad memories here, if not for me, then definitely for everyone else. This place hadn't exactly been the beacon of hope and leadership it was meant to be. Suddenly. I missed my little cottage in the woods. Alpha. Jasper. My head snapped up, seeing everyone staring at me with mixed expressions, including King and Ashwell. Uh, sorry. I was lost in thought. No worries. King stretched his hand out to Dimitri. Nice to see you again Alpha Varlos. You as well. I'm correct in assuming that you two will continue as Beta and Gamma here then. Yes sir. Excellent. Dimitri wants us to join in an alliance. I announced. Both men raised their eyebrows, but relief flooded into their eyes. I think we should get started right away, yes. Let's do it. Ashwell pulled one of the chairs to the desk and sat. For the next half an hour the six of us went over the details of our alliance. 
I followed along, listening intently. It wasn't that much different than school, learning about different alliances in other packs. So, now the tricky part. Dimitri frowned slightly. Legally, if Blood Moon were to help you out supply necessities, food, materials we would need a form of payment. At the moment though, Silver Moon is low on income. Violet told him about her plans for the fields, and the orchards, and the possible factory. All great ideas, but all of that will take time. I'm willing to help out now, of course, but I don't want any issues down the road. The last thing any of us needs is the elders stepping in and making something out of nothing. Or other smaller packs thinking I'm willing to give handouts. You understand where I'm coming from Jasper. I do. I leaned on the desk, thinking it over. What if we split profits? What did you have in mind? You provide Silver Moon with what we need, and in return, we cut you in. We can provide food from the fields, income from the trades with the humans, and maybe even some jobs at the factory. He thought about it for a minute before turning to Ben. I think that's a pretty good deal. Though Blood Moon isn't lacking in jobs. I can't see anyone traveling here to work. What if you owned the factory? Violet mused aloud. Half the profit would then go to Blood Moon, but you would be in charge of paying the employees. We would have the factory here, in Silver Moon for easy access to them. People could earn a living again, and you still get back what you put in. I think that's a fair deal. Jasper. I like it. But in that case, I'd like to lower your profit from whatever the factory sells. Fair. Everyone on board. Resounding yes around the room. I took a deep breath and went for my next course of action. I'd like to talk about the warriors. Dimitri raised an eyebrow at me. What about them? I've been told they lack in training. I would like your permission to hire a few of your warriors. I will provide them with shelter, food, all the accommodations. And it would only be temporary. Dimitri leaned against the wall, stroking his chin. As part of this alliance. It doesn't have to be. He looked at King. What shape are your fighters in? Honestly Alpha, they need work. Their techniques, as well as their attitudes. I thank the goddess we haven't had any serious attacks lately. But now, with Warwick dead and Anne gone, I do have a fear that rogues or even bigger packs will try to take us out. And you won't be able to defend yourselves properly. Dimitri nodded before turning back to me. I will agree to this as your family. I want my daughter and my grandbabies to be safe. Go make some calls. He said to Ben, who nodded and left. Where are we going to put them? King asked. Violet smiled. Haven't you handed out those eviction notices yet? Not yet. Well, let's go get on that, shall we? Right now. No time like the present King. Knowing I shouldn't let her do this alone, I followed her out of the office and down the hall. King met us outside a few minutes later, papers in hand. All right. Let's go. Who's first? He checked the names quickly. Kettler. House. First one. He pointed and we headed that way. I was a little surprised to see Dimitri with us, but maybe he was just coming along out of curiosity. Or perhaps, like me, he didn't want anyone threatening his daughter. Either way, I was glad he was behind us, as an ally. The first house was literally a minute's walk from the pack house. It had white brick walls, beautifully laid out gardens that looked well kept. A few rose bushes grew under the large windows in the front, and I could see a swing set in the backyard. The roof was well done, the gutters clean. As we walked up the narrow walkway, 
I noticed not one stone had a crack in it, not one weed peeking up. Warwick really took care of his friends. Violet bypassed all of us, walking right up to the door and knocking loudly. A few seconds later, an elderly woman answered, her small eyes roaming around each of our faces. Yes. Her voice was rough and hoarse. Hello ma'am. May we speak with Mr. Kettler please? Violet smiled. Mr. and Mrs. Kettler said not to let you in, Luna. She bowed her head, tacking the title on at the end. I'm not asking to come in ma'am. I would appreciate it if they would come out though. I am not sure. I can always have the beta escort them out. They stared at each other for a second before the woman nodded. I thought I saw a ghost of a smile on her face as she turned away, but maybe I imagined it. Her eyes glazed over as we waited. And then heavy footsteps sounded from inside the house. What nonsense is this? A man, Kettler I assumed, threw the door the rest of the way open, nearly knocking the old woman off her feet. Violet reached out to catch her, just in time. I recognized Kettler as the black-haired man who had spoken in the hall. Bertha! How dare you disobey me and allow them here? I should have you whipped. The old woman, Bertha, whimpered, backing away from him. I snarled. She told us you said not to let us in. We didn't come in. Violet snapped at him. I don't want you on my property at all. He replied sharply. Your property is on Silver Moon land. Which means it actually belongs to the Alpha and Luna. Dimitri spoke up. He'd edged closer to Violet. Who are you? Kettler challenged. Dimitri's aura swept around us, although it wasn't so intimidating for me anymore. Kettler, on the other hand, took a step back. Alpha Dimitri Varlos of Blood Moon. Perhaps you've heard of me? Oh, he continued as Kettler gulped, and that happens to be my daughter you're yelling at. A Alpha Varlos. Why yes. I'm sorry, so sorry Alpha. Please, come inside and have a drink. No, thank you. He declined. We're here on other business. Violet said. Kettler focused on her again. Such as. His tone was neutral, but even I could tell he was trying very hard to remain polite. King. She held out her hand and King gave her the paper. She gave it to Kettler. This is what we're here for. He scanned it, his face becoming a shade redder. What is this? He demanded. An eviction notice. We're giving you a month to get all of your belongings and relocate. Relocate? To where? This is my home. His face was definitely red now. He's going to hurt our mate. I started. Eno hadn't talked to me in a while. I wasn't sure why, but I'd been too distracted to really give it much thought. He won't hurt her. And we're right here to protect her. He better watch it. He grumbled. I don't trust him. I know. I don't either. The upper ranks have decided that your home could be put to better use. Like housing visiting warriors or alphas and their company. You will relocate to the main part of the pack, like everyone else. Violet explained calmly. I will. Who do you think you are, you? Dimitri and I growled at the same time. Violet stepped away, obviously realizing she pushed him too far. Ashwell pulled her behind his back. You will not insult your Luna. I snarled. She is not my Luna. Then you are not a part of this pack. Dimitri stepped forward. Everyone must look up to the Luna and Alpha as leaders, role models and caretakers. If you can't accept her, then... 
Then I will come join your pack. Kettler crossed his arms defiantly, but Dmitri laughed. I don't want you in my pack. Then you are sentencing us to become rogues. This time he shouted at me. I shrugged. I never banished you. You can choose to remain here, if you want. But Alpha Varlos is right you need to accept that Warwick is gone, and we will not give you special treatment any longer. You are doing this out of spite. I'm not. But I will not stand here all day and argue with you. You've been served the notice, and I expect you to follow through with it. Plans will be made for your new home by the end of the month. The realization finally sunk in, and he sputtered over his words. Finally, he managed a coherent sentence. You can't do this. I can, and I have. I'll give you a choice though, you can choose to remain here in the pack, without special treatment, or you and your family can leave and start over somewhere new. If you're that opposed to us as your Alpha and Luna. I asked about you. Violet spoke up. I'm told your mate graduated with a business degree in a human university. And you yourself are one of the top doctors around here. Don't me wrong, your attitude sucks, but it would be a shame to lose either of you. That shocked me. You're a doctor. Yes. He huffed. I work under the pack doctor. How in? I heard Dimitri mumble. Why should we stay? He looked between me and Vi. Warwick took care of us. You obviously don't want to. Warwick coddled you. I argued. I'm sorry that I won't, but everyone in the pack deserves to be treated equally. If one person is struggling, everyone helps out. If one person is getting ahead, everyone will have their back. But I expect those achievements to be earned, not given. I'm working on a plan for the pack hospital. Violet stepped around Ashwell. I just got the report this morning. When things get better around here, I would love to look into updating things over there. For your benefit, and for the packs. I could really use your help, Kettler. The offer seemed to shake him a bit. You want to help the hospital? Of course I do. Why would you do that? Warwick said things are fine, he never gave any money. You need to understand that we aren't your previous leaders. We want to help you. I stated. Violet nodded. He leaned against the doorway, running his hands through his hair. Finally, after many tense minutes had passed, he looked at us again. We'll stay. But I'm not happy about relocating. I don't think anyone who lives on this street will be. Violet smirked. You're evicting everyone. Like I said, I walk to stand beside my mate, everyone is equal. Violet's POV how is that guy a doctor? Dimitri asked. We were making our way to the next house, all visibly relieved things had sort of worked out. He also went to school in the human world. He graduated at the top of his class. When he came back to Silver Moon, he had to adjust a little to treating non-humans, but he is good at what he does. King answered. His bed manner isn't as good as his skills. Ashwell added. That, I can believe. Dimitri chuckled. This time... I let Jasper take the lead in the eviction process. The whole ordeal with Kettler stressed me out. And I really wasn't keen on doing it again. As it was, the next people didn't put up as much of a fight, but it was clear they weren't thrilled about their impending move. It took us two hours to get the job done, and by the end of it, I was whipped. These were some colorful people, with some colorful choice of words. That was rough. I yawned. Thank goddess it's done. Jasper agreed. Are you hungry? I could eat. I saw some chicken in one of the fridges. 
Could you make it for me? I really want to lie down. Of course. Jasper kissed the top of my head and I smiled. When we got back to the pack house, the guys headed to the kitchen, presumably to further discuss the future of the pack. I steered myself towards bedroom we'd stayed in last night, collapsing on the bed. To be truthful, I really didn't like this room. The walls were an ugly, dark purple color, with weird black flowery designs. It felt kind of gothic, and dark. Not that I had anything against goths, but it wasn't my style. However, it had a bed, and that's all I cared about right now. Only a few weeks in, and you two are already draining me. I patted my stomach. They can hear you. I shot up so fast, I got a little dizzy. Marion stood just inside the room, looking around sadly. I hadn't even heard her come in. Hello Marion. Do you mean the babies? I asked. She nodded. They hear their mother's voice first. It soothes them. I guess that makes sense. I really looked at her, noting how much better she looked already. She was still far too thin, but she was clean, free of dirt and rags, and in clean clothes. How are you feeling? Are you and Sky settling in well? It pains me to be back here. She said softly. I bit my lip, unsure if I should ask. But I did anyways. Why? It reminds me of him. Him. The old Alpha. Our eyes met. Different scenarios started running through my head of why she would be upset about Warwick. Given his reputation with women, I guessed it was nothing positive. Did you used to work here? No. Oh. I already knew that, but I thought maybe with her quiet nature, the other former employees maybe just hadn't noticed her. Wishful thinking, on my part. Marion walked to the bed, sitting next to me. Her hands were crossed in her lap, her hair partially covering her face. Can I trust you? She whispered. Of course you can Marion. I'm your Luna. She shook her head. Can I trust you, as a friend? Not just a Luna. Gently, I placed my hand on her shoulder. Yes. When she lifted her face to mine, there were unshed tears in her eyes. Then I would like to tell you my story. I didn't think saying no was really an option. I could tell she had thought hard about this decision, and I was ready to listen if she was willing to talk. I nodded, pulling my feet up under me. Marion nodded, taking a deep, shaky breath. Then she began to talk. I was not born in Silver Moon. I actually come from a pack far from here. When I was 16, we were attacked. Few made it out alive. We regrouped at a safe place, but the damage was done. My pack was destroyed. She sniffled, remembering her past loved ones. Some stayed together, and moved to different packs. I chose to go a separate way and I was on my own for a while. I didn't want to start over near the place my family had died. I went across the mountains, stayed in a few human cities for a while. But I started to miss the pack life, the feeling of being in that sort of community. I ended up coming out this way. I knew there were a few packs here. She looked at me. I was headed for Blood Moon. A big pack lots of security. A place I knew I would feel safe. You didn't make it. I said. Obviously, as she was here. I didn't. I was outside the border of Silver Moon when patrols spotted me. They thought I was a rogue. Soon, I was surrounded by wolves and men. I begged them to listen to me, I told them I wasn't a rogue. Although I guess I technically was. She shrugged. They brought me here, to, him. 
she clasped her hands tighter in her lap. I told him my story. I told him where I was headed. He offered me sanctuary in Silver Moon, but I was reluctant. It was nice, back then, but my hopes were pinned on Blood Moon. At first I declined, but the Alpha insisted. Eventually. I agreed. I told myself it was only temporary. I would rest here for a few weeks, recoup, and then be on my way. I wasn't an official pack member after all. The Alpha let me stay here, in the pack house. She stopped talking, seeming reluctant to continue. I waited, letting her gather her thoughts. One night, she continued in a hushed tone, the Alpha came to see me. I was surprised, it was late. He asked if he could come in, and I even though I was unsure, I didn't want to be rude. So I invited him into my room. He asked how I was liking the pack, if I was doing all right here. I told him I still wanted to try Blood Moon, but I thanked his for taking me in in the meantime. Her bottom lip started to quiver. He became angry. He asked me why his pack wasn't as good as Blood Moon, why I wanted to leave. He said all packs should have pretty young girls, and Blood Moon already had far too many. I didn't know what to say, so I told him I was tired, and asked him to leave. That only made him angrier, he, he grabbed me. Threw me on the bed. I was scared, confused. I didn't know what he was going to do. Not until, until he, ripped my nightgown off. Her unshed tears began to fall silently down her cheeks. Her breathing accelerated, a sob breaking from her lips. Marion it's okay. You don't need to tell me anymore. I soothed her. She laid her head on my shoulder, crying desperately. In that moment, I wished more than anything that Warwick had gone straight and was suffering the pain of a thousand deaths over and over. He deserved far worse. I I do. Need tea to tell why you. She sobbed. S. Sky. My stomach dropped while bile rose in my throat. It was an uncomfortable sensation. Sky is W.A. his daughter, isn't she? I asked her. Yes. A. N. never knew. B. but he did. Is that why you were out there? Where we found you? She nodded. He didn't want her to know. She whispered. I wrapped my arm around her, hugging her tightly. I am so sorry for what happened to you Marion. I wiped away a stray tear, not wanting to upset her more. But he's gone now, forever. He can never hurt you again. And I would never let anyone hurt you either. I need to ask you something. Anything. I. I want to leave. I want to take my baby and I want to leave. My heart lurched but I nodded. I understood why she was asking me this. I will talk to my dad. You can leave with him, or he can have someone take you and Sky to Blood Moon. I won't tell him everything, though, okay. Marion hugged me even tighter. Thank you. Thank you Luna. We sat like that until Jasper found me. He had a steaming chicken sandwich and some chips on a plate. His face grew worried and confused when he walked in, and he cleared his throat. E.R., sorry. I'll leave this here. He set the plate on the bed next to me. No, I'm sorry Alpha. I should go. Marion stood, wiping her face. Are you sure? I asked. I left Sky in our room. She should be waking up soon from her nap. All right. Come find me if you need me. I pulled her down for a hug once more, and then she was gone. Is she okay? Jasper took her place on the bed next to me. She will be. I grabbed my food, utterly starving. 
Anything I can do to help? Yes, actually. I took a big bite, chewed, and swallowed. You can release her from the pack, so she can go home with my dad. He searched my eyes briefly. Whatever he saw only made him nod and not ask any more questions. Perhaps he guessed, or maybe he just trusted me that much. As long he was willing to do it, I didn't care. We were quiet for a while, each lost in our own thoughts. I don't want to live here. Jasper suddenly spoke. I took in the room again. Me either. Not just here, in this room. I mean the pack house. I feel like it holds too much negativity. I winced, Marion's story still fresh in my mind. Yeah, I think it does. He laid back, placing his hands behind his head. I was thinking. My dad has some connections in the human world. He could easily get us materials as a lower cost. You want to build a new pack house? I asked surprised. Yeah, I do. I think. I think it would be good. For us, for the pack. For the people who were here with Warwick, and suffered under him. A new start. I mused. Yeah. He propped himself on one elbow. But we don't have to. I know there are tons of other, far important things to do right now. And it does sound selfish. I looked at the door Marion had walked through. No, I don't think it is. I think getting rid of this place would be good for a lot of people. Yeah. Yeah. All right. I'll call my dad, see what he thinks. You sure you're okay? I nodded. Just tired. I think I'm going to take a nap. Okay. Sitting back up, he pulled me in for a kiss. It wasn't exactly a peck on the lips, but I didn't mind. With everything else going on, I'd missed having these private moments with him. But it didn't feel right, right now. Not after knowing what I now knew about what had transpired behind these walls. I pulled back, giving him a soft smile. Wake me up in a little. I said. Will do. He left, closing the door behind him. And me? I finished my food, and curled up under the blankets, falling into an uneasy sleep. Violet's POV the next week went by with a slick tension in the air. I talked to Dad about Marion, and he'd agreed to get to Blood Moon as soon as possible. Within three hours, she was in the back of an SUV with a couple of his guys, thanking me tearfully, and profusely. I felt better seeing her leave the place that held memories of terror and horror for her. It was a kind of relief to know she would be safe from here on out. An even bigger relief to know the man responsible for her suffering was rotting. Greg and I had drawn up several informed and detailed plans for the fields, and even a location for the future factory. We'd been informed that one field, at the south end of the pack, was now unusable due to heavy rain and flooding for so long. The area was big enough, and with some work, it would make the perfect spot. And it was easily accessible to the pack. We agreed to come back to the flooding issue when plans for construction were being made. Greg was gathering his old friends, their sons and daughters, and anyone else who wanted to work in the fields. Dad had special ordered all the machinery they would need, at this rate, they'd be back to work in a couple days. The issue we were facing now was our ruling on the pack house. After talking to the girls who worked here, and the pack members who used to work here, there wasn't a lot of positivity towards the place. The only one who seemed happy to be here still was Stacy, and I was starting to question her sanity. According to everyone else, the house was generally, and always had been, an unpleasant environment. Girls would be verbally and sometimes physically assaulted by Anne, while being harassed by Warwick when she wasn't around. 
A few of the girls had had affairs with his friends, who were all mated men. Interestingly enough, Kettler wasn't one of them. Or at least, none of the girls had admitted to it. Either way, it made my outlook on him slightly brighter. In fact, I was off to see him this morning for a follow-up appointment about the twins. As much as I wished it was my mom, I wasn't going to ask her to come all the way out here for one appointment. I'll come to the next one, I promise. Jasper was still apologizing. Jasper, I told you, it's fine. I know some women get worked up about this, but I'm not. As long as you're in the delivery room, that's all I care about. I know, you said. But I want to come. There's just so much I have to do today. He groaned. I know. And Dad is leaving today. You still have to officially sign the Alliance contract, and then get down to the Mason's place, and then over the Listowels, and didn't you have another family? The Pierce. And after that, I have to go check on all the materials your dad ordered for the rebuilds, sign off on them. I put my hand on his cheek. It's a big job. I'm a little overwhelmed myself. But we'll fall into step soon. Like Dad and Uncle Ben said, usually an alpha doesn't have this much coas when he takes over. It's a unique situation. I keep telling myself that. We're making progress, little by little. I can't wait to see the end result. The new, and better silver moon. Me too. I have to go. I love you. I love you too. I want ultrasound pictures. I'll be sure to remind them. We shared a kiss, and then I was out the door. As of right now, we were still in that horrid room downstairs, and I was always glad when I left it. I swung by the kitchen, grabbing a cream cheese bagel before I made my way out. King had instructed me earlier on the directions to the pack hospital, it wasn't far. However, it would be my first time seeing it in person. It was the opposite direction from the hall, perhaps I'd seen it when we'd first arrived and didn't notice. My mind wasn't focused on that though. I had a different agenda today, aside from the welfare of my babies. 223, 225. I counted the address numbers as I walked until I was standing in front the hospital. I blinked, confused. This couldn't be it. The building in front of me looked like any run-down house on the street. Old red brick, with vines growing carelessly and lazily up the ists in front. The lawn was slightly overgrown, and one window had a hole in the bottom corner, reminding me of the time I'd accidentally thrown a baseball through the window of our pack house. The roof was in bad shape, desperately in need of repair, and the stone porch and steps were absurdly cracked and chipped. It was a wonder nobody had an injury just trying to walk up to the door. Mindful of this, I tread carefully knocking on a worn brown door that had the paint peeling away. Everything about the place was falling apart. Oh. Looking up, I was face to face with Kettler. Today, his hair was tied back into a ponytail, and he wore the standard white coat of a doctor. He also didn't look particularly happy to see me. I'm here for my appointment. I said. Come on. He replied gruffly. I stepped inside awkwardly, looking around. The inside wasn't much better than the outside, faded yellow walls, a narrow hallway with a dirty rug, and some plants that gave a weak impression that someone was trying to keep the place up. I frowned. In here. Kettler stood beside an open door. I nodded as I passed him. The room seemed generally clean enough but nowhere near where it should be. I took off my jacket, hanging on the back of the patient chair. I'll need to open a new file for you. He sat down at a desk, starting to click around on the computer there. You can take a seat. 
All right. I'll need your full name, birthday, rank. And I would appreciate a phone number to your old hospital so they can send me your medical history. I gave him all the generic details about myself, noting that Ashwell had been correct in his assessment of Kettler attitude. The whole time he typed away on the keyboard, he never looked at me. Any time he asked me something, it was quick, to the point, but not friendly. Anything I should know about your past? Any substantial injuries? Um. I fell out of a tree when I was four. His lip twitched slightly. How bad was the fall? I broke my arm. I shrugged. He entered the information, sliding his chair back. We can begin now. I tried very hard not to roll my eyes as I stood and walked around him to the bed. I laid down, placing my hands at my sides. Kettler stared at me, visibly hesitating. Is there a problem? I asked. No. He snapped. I watched him walk to a small sink that was, like everything else here, rather unhygienic looking. Even after he'd put the gloves on, I wasn't sure how clean his hands really were. Wheeling the machine he needed out from the head of the bed, he finally looked me in the face. Any idea how far along you are? My mom said a few weeks before we came here. Your mom? She's the head doc at Blood Moon. Figures. He muttered. Louder he said, so you don't know the genders yet. I shook my head. All right. Can you lift your shirt, and place this towel down? He hadn't me what was essentially a rag. With holes. I raised my eyebrows at him and he scoffed. I know it's not as fancy as you're used to I'll pass on the towel. I interrupted him. Fine. I lifted my shirt to reveal my abdomen and he applied the gel. It was ice cold, making me jump a little. However, when he put the ultrasound wand on my stomach, I focused on my gut feeling, my instincts. Mom and Dad always told us to trust our instincts, especially when it came to people. And to trust our wolves. What do you think? I asked Hala. I don't like him. Really? His attitude sucks. Dot. She huffed. But I don't feel the need to rip his head off. Yet, anyways. I get it. I'm not uncomfortable, not really. As long as his focus is on our pups. Ahem. Turning my head, Kettler was frowning deeply at me. What? I asked you a question. Oh. I was talking to my wolf, sorry. Was it important? I shrugged. He paused. Is that so? Yup. What did you ask me? His lips pressed into a line. I asked if you wanted to know the genders today. You can tell that. Obviously, or I wouldn't be asking. Yes, please. But first I want to know how they look. Are they healthy? He looked back at the screen. Appears so. Baby B is very active. Can. Can I see? He turned the monitor without answering. My mouth fell slack. They were so different. Last time I saw them, they were little dots, barely resembling anything. Now, I could make out limbs, heads, even a tiny little foot. Kettler pointed to the screen in two spots. These are the heartbeats. Both look good, normal. The twin on the right started moving, appearing to be jumping around. I laughed, watching my baby play in the womb. How amazing they were already. The genders. He adjusted the wand on my skin. Baby A, is a boy. He stated. My heart flipped. I was having a boy. And baby B. He moved the wand to other side of my stomach. 
adjusted it. And then again. Stop moving little one. I was amazed to hear Kettler's voice so soft, almost kind when he said that. After a few minutes, he sighed. Try turning on your side. Sometimes that settles them down enough. I did as he instructed. Ah. Baby B, is also a boy. I gasped. Identical boys. Oh goddess. Not what you wanted. I shook my head. I don't care what they are, as long as they're healthy. Just. Boys. Wow. Mom said boys were easier than girls though. I wouldn't know, I only have girls. Can you print off a couple pictures for me? For Jasper. Sure. This time I took the towel to clean off the gel while he went through the stills he'd taken and printed some out. He handed them to me, leaning back while I looked them over, smiling widely. These are adorable. Thank you. We'll need to schedule another appointment, in two weeks. Okay. He stood, but I called out to him. Kettler, wait. He half turned back. I prefer Dr. Kettler in the hospital. Right, sure. I think we should talk. About. The hospital. I said, as if it should be obvious. He let out a breath. I thought about what you said, about new equipment. It's a generous offer, but honestly, I'll have to decline. We don't have the room. He sounded so defeated, so angry. Given the state of the place, I could understand why. That offer still stands. I said. Didn't you hear? We don't have the room. Well, not here, no. He swung around, fully facing me. What does that mean? You expect me store it somewhere else? Yet. Yeah. Like at a new hospital. I crossed my arms. He blinked slowly. Opened his mouth. Closed it. Finally, he shook his head, running his hand down his face. What am I supposed to say to that? You're supposed to say yes. What are you even talking about? Are you saying, what? You want to move the hospital. More like I want to build a new one. He laughed. Hard, enough that he doubled over. You and that mate of yours. He gasped. Absolutely crazy. Kettler straightened, a new glint in his eyes. Like someone who wanted to hope, but was too afraid to. What is so crazy about it? This place is obviously in no shape anymore for a medical practice. How rusted is that sink? I jerked my chin towards it. Almost to the point of falling apart at the touch. He smirked. The roof has holes that open into two of the rooms, so they are unchewable. The head doctor barely comes in because the state of things here is so poor. The floors are garbage, the walls probably have mold behind them, and yesterday, I chased a rat out with a broom. If that's the case, then why are you so against the idea of a new building? I asked curiously. Do you know how many times I talked to Warwick? He sneered. How many times I told him about the roof before it finally gave way. That we needed updated equipment, a new paint job, new computers. I begged him to do something. At one point I begged him to relocate us to a more suitable place. He took a step in my direction. Nothing ever happened. I stayed loyal to that mutt for years on the promise that something would get done. And then he dies and you walk in, wanting, not to relocate, but you build a new hospital. I don't see what's so unbelievable about that. My dad that's right. Your dad is going to pay for it. He sank into his chair, glaring at me. And what's the plan for that hey? You know it has to be paid back. 
You know a cost like that will carry over well into your children's lives. Maybe even your grandchildren. You and your mate want to rebuild Silver Moon on someone else's dime. You think you're helping us, but you're only putting us into debt with a pack that could wipe us off the planet in an instant if we fail to repay. Pursing my lips, I thought his words over. It was understandable he would worry about that, and I wondered how many others thought the same. But they didn't know Blood Moon, didn't know my family. How could they know they didn't have anything to worry about if Ted never met them? Moriso, how could I address that issue with PAC members, and reassure them? I supposed I'd have to try with Kettler first. My family wouldn't do that to you. I said. Yes, I'm sure the heartless Alpha is just pining to help out a poor pack without any hidden agenda. He isn't like that anymore. I argued calmly. Not for a long time. Not since he accepted my mom. He would never put so much into helping someone only to take it away like that. If a problem occurred, his first thought would be to find a solution, not to wipe out Silver Moon. I walked back to my seat, plopping down. I can only apologize for the way you were treated before. I can't change the past. But I can help you now, and in the future. This place, this isn't suitable for anyone. My mom would definitely agree, being the head doctor at Blood Moon. And I know for a fact that she would murder my dad if he ever even thought about taking a hospital away from a pack. And believe me, if you should fear anyone, it's her. Really? He mocked. Ever heard of a mother wolf? His eyes widened. Wait. So that's true? The Luna of Blood Moon really is a mother wolf? I smirked. You can ask and if you don't believe me. I heard Mom shifted when she wouldn't leave after the challenge. His eyes were now the size of dinner plates. Are you? No. Though I am quite large. Or Hala is, rather. I swear he exhaled in relief, and I chuckled. Then I leaned forward in my seat. We don't have to be enemies Kettler. I don't make empty promises. If you're willing to work with me, I really can help you. He stared at me for a while. I never budged, showing him I was totally serious. Eventually, he made a decision. All right. He agreed. On one condition. Name it. I want the hospital to be top priority. You don't know. I've had to turn away so many PAC members because I don't have the room to put them here. Elderly, and even some children. I nodded. I'll talk to Jasper. Later we can address the pack as a whole, but I agree with you. I stood, grabbing my jacket. I turned back at the door, amused to see Kettler still looking kind of stunned. I have a condition of my own. I said. What? You work with me on this. I can tell you really care about what you do, and I need someone like that, with that dedication to help me see it through. Unbelievably, a slow smile spread across his face. Deal. I returned his smile, leaving the room. Violet. I paused with my hand on the doorknob of the front door, looking over my shoulder. Yes. Thank you. That's what a Luna is for. Jasper's POV Vi, I have to focus on the homes. We were outside, having a private picnic away from the pack house. I'd set it up for Vi, knowing how much she hated eating the kitchen. I couldn't blame her. It should have been one of the biggest rooms in the house, but it was actually one of the smallest. Neither of us liked the room we were in either. I know, but this is important Jasper. Have you seen that place? It's disgusting. I don't want to give birth there. She took a bite of her sandwich. Chicken, as was her craving. 
I sighed. Even if I agreed, a whole new hospital wouldn't be ready by the time you give birth anyways. It would be, if we had available hands. I was thinking of asking Dad. He's done a lot already. I know. She rested her chin on her knees. But this is important. Blame it on me growing up around a doctor mom, but this should be the priority right now. Imagine if we got attacked? That building can only hold two patients, maybe. How would we be helping the pack then? We need this hospital. I let my head fall back, staring at the sky. I knew she was right. There was just much else to do. How do we tell people we're putting the rebuild on their homes off? We just tell them. They'll understand. She sounded so confident in that answer. And you really want to work with Kettler on this? I looked at her. The guy who yelled at you on his doorstep. He's, not a pleasant person. She admitted. But he was better at the end. I feel that he really cares about his job. Remember you said that. I teased. All right. The hospital comes first. Her eyes lit up. She crawled over the blanket, kissing me heartily. You're the best maid in the world. I grinned. Remember that too, when Kettler gets on your nerves. She laughed. I focused, reaching out to the pack. As an alpha. I could now mind-link everyone at once, helpful in emergencies. Attention Silver Moon I felt tension rise within me, a reaction to everyone receiving the min-link. I thought about how to word the next part. Something has been brought to my attention, something that concerns everyone. Today I received a report on the condition of the PAC hospital, and have concluded that it is not suitable for safely treating patients. I hope you all understand that the health of PAC members is vital. As such, we have decided to not to relocate, but to build a new hospital. Unfortunately, this means the rebuilding of houses will be put on temporary hold. As your Alpha and Luna, we apologize sincerely, but we must think of the most necessary improvements to make first. I cut off the link, hoping the news would be generally well received. Violet squeezed my hand. I'll call mom when we get back. She has all sorts of contacts that can help us with equipment and stuff. Sounds good. We spent another half hour outside, enjoying each other's company. Of course, I was stressed about having to put plans on hold, but I didn't let that ruin my time with my mate. Besides, even if the population of Silver Moon was angry with me, I still had good reason to celebrate. Running my hands over Vi's skin, I leaned down to kiss her stomach. I still can't believe it. Twin boys. I exclaimed. I jumped like a kid when she'd told me. Like her, I didn't really care about the genders, but now I couldn't stop thinking about them. Would they take after me, or Violet? I kind of hoped they would take more after her, except in attitude maybe. It would have been great to have a daddy's girl, but it's not like this was our only shot. If I wanted to, we could always have more kids. Little Jaspers. She giggled now. I can't wait to meet them. Me too. I smiled softly at her. You're going to be an amazing mother. Her cheeks colored red. And I know you'll be a great dad. I really hope so. I could hear the doubt in my voice, something she picked up on. I felt her hand on my cheek, making me look at her. What's wrong? She searched my face, and I knew I couldn't lie to her. Well. My dad is great, you know? A great role model. But. He's not my dad. And where I came from, who I came from. I laughed bitterly. I'm just scared. Listen to me. She got on her knees, 
I level with me. She placed her hand on my shoulders firmly. You are not that man. You are kind, caring, sweet, considerate. You care about others, not just yourself. You've done more for this pack since you've been here than he did in his lifetime. You saved them Jasper. You are not him. You really believe in me that much. I whispered. Of course I do. I was wrong about you. And all the naysayers will see it too you're a wonderful person, with a big heart. You're going to be a great alpha, and a great dad. You're already a great mate. I pulled her in for a hug kissing her forehead. Thank you. Anytime. We sat, embracing, until a noise sounded behind us. I peeked over my shoulder seeing Tracy running towards us. Her face looked panicked. Alpha. Luna. She hollered. Violet pulled out of my arms. Tracy? What's wrong? She came to a stop a few feet away, panting hard. You need, to come. The pack, man, I need to start working out. She rasped. I jumped to my feet. What happened? What about the pack? I demanded. They, everyone is outside the pack house. You need to come back. Everyone. Violet stood too. Mostly everyone, yet. Immediately, the three of us starting jogging back. As out of breath as she was, Tracy kept pace, her face worried. I was as well, I could only come up with the conclusion that people were angry about the temporary hold on home repairs. I tried to come up with ways to calm a potentially angry mob, but I was coming up blank. My only saving grace was hoping Dimitri was there to help me, and once again, I felt like an incompetent alpha. However, when we reached the house, I didn't hear any protests or shouting. Did they say why they're here? I asked Tracy. She shook her head quickly. They only demanded to see you. We strode to the front lawn, but I kept the girls behind me, just in case. I looked over the crowd, peering at each face, gauging reactions. King and Ashwell stood on the bottom steps, waiting for us. Dimitri and Ben stood further back, at the doors. What is going on? I asked when we reached them. King clapped me on the shoulder. Ask them. He nodded to the crowd. Okay. I stepped down. How can I help you? I called out. A woman stepped out of the throng of people. She had to be in her thirties, with a kind face that only got softer as she smiled at me. Is it true? What you said about the hospital? She asked. Uh, yeah. Look, I'm sorry about that, but we don't want your apologies. Someone shouted. We will get everything done, but it's going to take time. I tried again. We don't care. A teenage boy stepped forward beside the woman. We just want it done. Violet took a place by my side holding up her hands. We're very sorry about the inconvenience, but a new, safer hospital takes precedence right now. The pack needs a place to treat people, and the current hospital just isn't good for that. Oh, we know dear. The woman laughed. Violet blinked at her. Uh, good. I don't think we're on the same page. She said. We're not here to complain. We're here to help. Help. We want to help build the hospital. What? Violet and I spoke at the same time. My name is Patty. She introduced herself. This here is my son. A year ago, he was injured by a rogue. Dr. Kettler did what he could for him, but it wasn't enough. The boy lifted up his pant leg, revealing a prosthetic from the knee down. 
I gasped, shocked. Never had I seen a wolf that badly injured. We healed wicked fast. How? I couldn't help but ask. It shouldn't have happened. Patty shook her head. It was only a cut, but it got infected. Bad. We didn't have the supplies or medicine we should have, and Nicky had to get it amputated. He was lucky he didn't die from the surgery. She stroked his hair. I'm okay with it now though. Her son, Nicky said. I'm the only wolf in the pack with three legs. He grinned. And this, Patty pointed, is Tara, and her daughter, Yelena. She gave birth at home a few months ago, because the hospital was full. There was only one room. The girl said. She was a slim brunette, holding her daughter on her hip. We told the Alpha we needed a better hospital, but he didn't listen. Someone called. He never listened. We've lost good men because of his ignorance. We want to help. Let us help. I looked at everyone, committing their faces to memory. Men, women, teenagers, kids, even babies. They weren't angry. They weren't even upset. Not for the reason I thought they'd be. Instead, they'd gathered together in a cry for help, willing to do the work themselves. At the edge of the crowd, I saw Kettler, who was looking around as well. Judging by his expression, I guessed this was overwhelming him as much as it was me. I cleared my throat, holding up a hand to get everyone's attention. I am, awestruck. You know what I see right now. I shouted. I see a group of people, who choose to come together and offer to spend hours helping with something that will benefit everyone. I see selfless, amazing people who have suffered, starved and been neglected. You could have come here with complaints, but instead you're here, willing to work together for the betterment of your pack. And I am so proud to be standing here with you. I reached down to take Vi's hand. Your Luna realized the importance of this project and came to me. She has agreed to work with Dr. Kettler to bring Silver Moon the hospital and health care it deserves. Cheers went up in the crowd, and Violet looked down, blushing. Anybody who wants to work, can. Thank you, so much, for coming out today. Let us meet, and we will inform you with our plans. More cheers, and excited chatter. I found Kettler again, motioning for him to join us. We headed inside, King and Ashwell right behind us. That went better than expected. Dimitri commented. The pack has been requesting updated health care for years. King said. We've lost too many and too many others have paid the price for Warwick's poor choices. Ashwell agreed. I treated that boy myself. Kettler spoke up. He was staring at the floor. He never should have lost that leg. I was close to sending him to a human hospital, or going myself for medicine, but Warwick wouldn't allow it. Violet touched his shoulder. That will never happen again. At least he's alive. He nodded, but he was still visibly upset. I wondered if that was the reason for his attitude, or if it was the situation itself. Either way, we had a starting point for the pack now. I want you to go make a list of everything you need. Materials, equipment, everything. Call your mom too. King, I want you with me upstairs. I want to find the best and most accessible place to build. On it. Ashwell, I want you to do an updated population check on the pack. I need to know how many rooms we need. I also want a list of all the expecting mothers in the pack, and people with injuries. Yes, Alpha. What about us? Ben asked. I don't really need you guys, unless you want to help with the construction. I need to make some calls actually. 
A hospital isn't cheap. Kettler shuffled beside us. Violet glanced at him, wary. How much? Kettler asked. In this case, no charge. His head snapped up. What? I said it wasn't cheap, not that I wouldn't do it. I want my grandbabies born in a safe place. I also want you to have everything you need so people get the treatment they deserve. Kettler gaped at him. W.Y. would you do that for us? We're not your pack. Dimitri walked to him, placing a hand on his shoulder. Maybe not. But my daughter is your Luna, and even if she wasn't, I would do this. Why should I stand back and let people suffer when I know I can help? Kettler's mouth flapped, resembling a fish. Violet giggled, nudging him. Told you so. She said. You people are all nuts. Are you saying you don't want the help? Help. He scoffed. I'm not one to look a gift horse in the mouth. Let's go start on that list. I really want that new computer, mine is crap. It keeps freezing, and the junk folder is crammed. He pulled Violet away, talking animatedly. I had a feeling she was regretting asking him to help her right now. Thank you. I said to her dad. He waved me off. Jasper, do you have any idea how much money I have? I shook my head. Never thought about it. Too much. Building a hospital won't even make a dent. The alliance we have is only for legality reasons. He shoved his hands in his pockets. I could build Blood Moon three times over, and still be well off. I guess you need a new name then. Can't say you're heartless after all. I vote for Marshmallow. Ben said. I laughed. Try it, I dare you. Dimitri grumbled. We'll see what Lily thinks about it. Ben replied, uncaring. The Alpha groaned. There is something else I would like to discuss. I glanced at the door Vi had disappeared through. I changed my mind. Ben said. You're more of a S more. Hard on the outside, but soft and, and gooey in the middle. Shut up Ben. Whatever S more. What Jasper? He turned away from his beta. I was wondering if you could help me find a jewelry store. Jasper's POV it had been exactly one month now since the construction on the hospital started. After Dimitri made some calls, and Luna Lily as well, I was extremely happy to be standing in front of a brand new building. It was definitely the most modern of anything in Silver Moon, but not for long. Construction on the homes had started a few days ago, and was going fast-paced, but efficient. The payoff of both projects was huge. Every day, more and more people would come to help, and so, new bonds were formed. Working side by side the people of my pack, I started to make friends. I even looked forward to waking up to a hard day's work, using my bare hands to create something so necessary. Violet put in her share by setting up tents and distributing food and drinks, as well as making sure any and all deliveries were delivered, signed for, and stocked accordingly. Her right-hand man was Kettler, of course, and I was shocked and amazed at how close they'd grown over the course of thirty days. He was still rough around the edges, and it was safe to say his former friend group had abandoned him. But he was much kinder to those around him, even helping by taking heavy items from the elders, or helping setting up the tents for the day. Mostly, he helped Violet, making sure everything was the way it should be. The head doctor had formally put in his request to retire, making Kettler the new head as well. Another big, and very welcome, surprise was my parents and sister finally coming to Silver Moon. They'd expressed so much pleasure in what we were doing already, and Dad came every day to help while Mom worked the tents when Vi wasn't around. 
Elena was perfectly content helping our mom, never once complaining. Chiron was due to arrive back home too, soon enough. Ladies and gentlemen. I took Violet's hand, smiling hugely. I am so pleased to announce to you that the Pack Hospital of Silver Moon is officially open. A deafening roar went up. People hugged, and many expecting mothers were in tears. Vi rubbed her now swelling belly, her own eyes misty. This is amazing. She said. I know. I pulled her to me. To the crowd, the tents are set up over there. Food and drinks have been laid out. This is a great cause for celebration, so please, help yourselves and celebrate. People started moving towards the designated area. Music was playing from a table inside, the tables making a white horseshoe. The center was for mingling, as many were already doing, while others took the seats spaced around. Kettler jogged up to us on our way. I'm going to do one more full sweep. He said to Violet. Oh, Kettler. We've done five already, and we've been cleared through the proper channels to be open and running. Come on, eat something, talk to people. Not really MT thing, you know. Your mate and children are here. She pointed. Just go pretend you're enjoying yourself then. He smirked. Perhaps, for a little while. He waved before taking off. I don't see any of Kettler's former acquaintances here. I noted, looking around. I'm not surprised. None of them helped with the build either. It seems some people just don't want to mature. It's a bit more than that. I smiled at Greg and his buddies as we passed. I'm not sure what to do about them. I meant what I said about having each other's backs, they don't look out for anybody but themselves. Vi pulled me to a stop. I get it. But maybe, for just right now, you can turn off being Alpha? Just come and enjoy this with me. My eyes raked over her face, down to her chest and legs. She looked down right stunning. In a long flowy black dress, her stomach round at the middle. She wore minimal makeup for the event, but she didn't need it. She was glowing. Slowly, I ran my hand up her arm, over her shoulder and to her cheek. I am very tempted to enjoy you. I said lowly. She bit her lip. That's not what I said. It's what I'm thinking. Lust sparked in her eyes. I leant down until our lips touched, taken aback by the force of her kiss. Sparks electrocuted between us, and I almost forgot we were surrounded by people. Ahem. We pulled apart, finding Dimitri standing next to us. He looked awkward. Vi giggled. Dimitri. I nodded. Enjoying the celebration. Yes, thank you. I just came to tell you that we're leaving in a little while. Oh. I've stayed longer than I expected, not that I minded helping. But it's time to home. Ben won't shut up about Clara, and I really can't listen to their phone calls anymore. Ah, Uncle Ben knows what phone X is. Violet asked calmly. Goddess Violet. No. Well, maybe. But I haven't been around for that. Just. Ugh, come give me a hug before I go. I laughed as they embraced. I felt a little sad to see him go, but I was more able mentally now. I felt ready to take on this job without him now, he'd taught me a lot in the short time he'd been here. I held out my hand when Violet stepped back. Dimitri took it firmly, smiling. Thank you Dimitri. For everything. I'll make sure Silver Moon remembers what you did for them. I didn't do anything but throw some money away. You and Violet did it all son. You inspired hope in these people, gave them a new start. 
a few new buildings don't mean much compared to that. Come back when the babies are born. I said. Wouldn't miss it. We'll keep in touch. Bye dad. Love you. Love you too kid. Tell Garrett I said hi, okay. We'll do. Ben strode over to us. Kman s more, the cars are packed. I told you to stop calling me that. Never. Dimitri rolled his eyes at his beta. With one last wave, they sauntered out of the tents together. Do you want anything? I asked my mate. Is there any chicken? I chuckled. Of course there is. I made sure it was on the menu. Then you know what I want. She grinned. Be right back. I made my way through the party, stopping briefly to talk to some people. When I reached the table with the meats, I started loading up a plate with chicken, mashed potatoes, peas and carrots, cheese and pickles. Violet's appetite had grown considerably and I knew I'd be filling another plate within the hour, even with this one piled so high. My, someone has an appetite. The smooth feminine voice was at my ear. Head turning right, I found Stacy smiling up at me. Her blonde hair was done in loose waves that fell to her waist, and she was wearing a very low-cut red dress that hugged her skin. She was also standing extremely close to me, one hand on her hip the other on the table. I took a step away from her. Hello Stacy. I greeted her politely. Are you enjoying yourself Alpha? Yes, I am. You. I'm enjoying myself very much. She flashed me a wide smile. Good. I can't believe we have a hospital. She continued. So much work, am I right? I almost snorted at her remark. Work? She hadn't done any work. I'd seen her plenty of times over the past month hanging around the site, but she never lifted so much as a hammer and nails. Mostly her and her friends would sit around, giggling and trying to chat up the men who were working. Twice, I asked if she was able to help out in the tents, and twice, she denied me saying she was happy where she was. After that, I'd stopped bothering. It's a big accomplishment. I agreed with her. I poured some gravy onto the mashed potatoes. Excuse me, I have to get this to Violet. She wrinkled her nose a little. Aren't you sweet, bringing her food? Yeah, I guess. She sighed dramatically. I wish I had a mate to take care of me like that. You will someday. I doubt it. She pouted. I didn't find him on my 18th. Well, maybe he's not in this pack. Sorry, but I have to go. Bye Alpha. I walked away, relieved to end the conversation. The girl was weird, and it was obvious she didn't like Violet. Girls were way too jealous sometimes. I found Vi at a table, chatting with some other girls. They nodded respectfully to me as I approached, taking their leave. I set the plate down in front of her, pulling up my own chair. Extra gravy, just the way you like. I smiled. Thank you. Her eyes cast to the side, narrowing a bit. Were you talking to Stacy? I nodded. Briefly. She came up to me while I was getting your food. Vi took a big bite of the chicken. About. I shrugged. Nothing, really. Whining about not having a mate to take care of her. The fork froze halfway to her mouth, her eyes immediately finding mine. What? It's not a big deal, I didn't even really pay attention. You know she was flirting with you, right? I kind of figured that. I reached across the table, taking her hand. I have no interest in Stacy. Or any other girl for that matter. I know that. 
but it still bugs me that she would try. Her eyes grazed sideways again. I followed her line, finding Stacy, now talking with her usual group. She saw us looking and gave waved. Violet gave a tight smile in return, looking away. She stabbed her chicken. Calm down Vi. I'm calm. She snapped. I scooted my chair closer to her. You never have to worry about her, or anyone else. I love you, and I always will. Good. Because I'm kind of the coolest chick there is. She smirked. I laughed. Yes, you are. Leaning over the table, our lips almost touched before a loud, terrorized shriek filled the air. Jerking away from each other, I jumped to my feet, trying to locate the source of the sound. Rogues. As soon as I heard the word, I gently, but firmly pulled Violet up. Go. Get the women, children, and elders to the pack house. I said. She shook her head. Too far. I'll get them into the hospital. All right, go. I walked away quickly, pushing my way through panicked pack members. Growls were erupting now, and the sounds of a fight. I exited the tents, finding an already full force battle going on not thirty feet away. At least a dozen wolves were charging forward trying to get through the warriors. I snarled, ripping my jacket off and kicking off my shoes. And then I was on all fours, teeth bared as I jumped into the fray. I went for the closest wolf, his scent a dead giveaway of his rogue status, and sunk my teeth into his shoulder. He yelped, jumping around. My claws came up, and then back down his side, fat and blood piring out. Leaving him on the ground, I moved on to the next. Leave one alive. I commanded through the mind link. I spotted two rogues on top of one of the warriors, biting away. The brown wolf on the ground was clawing, kicking, and biting in an attempt to escape. Sprinting their way, I collided with one, sending him flying. The other let out a surprised whine, jumping back. The brown wolf jumped at him, immediately sinking his teeth into the neck. We worked chotikoli until the ground was littered with bodies. Got one over here. Knocked him out. Ashwell said. His grey wolf was circling a now naked man lying in the grass. Good job. Take him. Where do you usually take them? We have cells. They aren't too reliable. I growled. Of course they're not. Just take him there, and post guards. Inside and out. If he makes it outside before I question him, he's dead. Yes Alpha. I shifted back, looking for pants, and grateful when someone handed me a pair of sweats. Then I looked around, wincing. The once green grass was stained with red. Deceased shifted men lay all around. I counted fourteen in total, including our prisoner. What a mess. Vi. Jasper. Are you okay? I'm good. It wasn't much of a fight. It's over. Yet. Yeah. All right. I'll move everyone out, away from here. See you at the house. I'll be there soon. Cutting off the link, I made my way to the warriors huddled together. Anybody injured? I asked. A few scratches. Nothing that won't heal within the hour. One of them answered. All right. Can we clean this up? What should we do with the bodies? I paused. What do you mean? They exchanged looks. How should we uh? dispose of them. I frowned. The same we always do. Burn them. I swung around, rounding on them. What? No. Where did you get that from? I eyed each of them, the light bulb going off. 
Have you never been properly trained in how to deal with rogue corpses? They all shook their heads. What? Do you usually burn the bodies? I demanded. Sometimes, if there isn't a lot. Other times, we just toss them in the woods. Another replied quietly. Disgust and anger were evident on my face, I could tell. We don't burn bodies. Or toss them. We bury them for goddess sakes. Even rogues have the right to be buried like you or I. I shouted. Some men flinched at my words. Yes Alpha. Where? Find a spot away from the housing and away from here. I don't care if it's in the woods. And dig deep, no shallow graves. Yes Alpha. They chorused. I stormed away from them, appalled. King hurried up to me. I want every body that was tossed in the woods found, and buried wherever those men are burying these guys. I ordered gruffly. Of course. You ever seen them before? I nodded to a rogue on the ground as we passed. Never. We don't get random attacks here much. Last time was a couple years ago, I think it's because we're close enough to Blood Moon. Well, let's hope the guy Ashwell took down talks. I want to know why they attacked. He glanced at me. They're rogues. They attack for food or money or just because they're dumb. I stopped in my tracks, facing him. Did you see the way they moved together? How they were trying to get around us. If they wanted food or money, they could have gone straight for the pack house, or for town. But they came here instead. He thought about it. You're right. It is odd, for rogues. Exactly. Go find your mate, and then I want you posted at the cells, outside. Can do. He bowed his head before running off. I quickened my pace as well, anxious to see my own mate. Violet's POV didn't think we'd have to the hospital this soon. I said. Neither did I. But let's be thankful it was today and not a month ago. Kettler replied. Both of us jumped as the woman on the bed, Natalia, screamed, again. It'd been a little shocking when, in the midst of getting everyone out of here and back to their homes, her water had suddenly broke. I'd mind linked Kettler immediately, asking what I should do. Yes, my mom was head doctor, but that didn't make me a medical expert. I could stitch someone up though, and I had knowledge on emergency situations in the field, but delivering a baby? Not within my capacity. The best I could do was get her to maternity ward and wait for Kettler. Where is my mate? She screamed. He said he was on his way. Kettler reassured her. I could tell he was trying to remain polite. It was nice to see him working on his attitude with patience at least. He's always late. For everything. Last week, he was 30 minutes late to dinner with my parents. Oh, goddess, here comes another one. She winced, shutting her eyes tightly. Her low moan turned into another scream. Would you like me to go try and find him Natalia? I offered. No. No, stay. Please. If that moron doesn't make it, I want someone here. She panted. And then you can kick his ass for me afterwards. I giggled. Whatever you want. The door burst open, and in ran a disheveled-looking young man with black hair and blue eyes. His eyes found Natalia immediately. Relief crossed his features, but she glared at him murderously. Cain. Where have you been? She screamed at him. Nat, I am so sorry. I got lost trying to find your room. He walked to stand beside her. I'm here now baby. How you doing? I took a step back, knowing from my mom how stupid that question was. 
As expected, Natalia exploded. How am I doing? How am I doing? Well, I don't know Kane. I feel like I want to puke and at the same time, my insides feel like they're being lit on fire and drenched in acid with every contraction, and soon, I'll be pushing out a watermelon from my vagina. How do you think I'm doing? She shrieked. Kane's eyes were wide and frightened as he gulped. I, I am sorry baby. What can I do to help? You can never touch me or come near me again. She hissed. Oh. Okay. Kane started to walk away. Where are you going? Come back here and hold my hand. Natalia shouted. Her poor mate looked all kinds of confused and I had to turn away to hide my laughter. Even Kettler had his head ducked. You got it from here. I asked him. He nodded. Sheila should be here soon too. You're good to go. Thank you, Luna, for staying with Natalia. We really appreciate it. Kane smiled at me, then winced when Natalia caught his hand in a death grip. No problem. I replied and backed out of the room. On my way out of the hospital, I ran into Sheila, a woman in her mid-thirties who had recently come back to Silver Moon from university. Her parents had told her everything that had gone on in recent months, and as soon as she came back, she handed Kettler her resume to be a nurse. We were glad, but also still looking for more, obviously. A hospital couldn't be run by two people. Hello Luna. Can you point me to the room of the patient? Just down there. Room 709. Thank you. She hurried off. Exiting the hospital, I almost missed King standing outside. In fact I might have, had he not fallen into step beside me. Were you waiting for me? Yes. I need you to come with me. The Alpha wants you to meet him in the cells. My brow furrowed. The cells? Why? The prisoner we captured isn't cooperating. Okay. And he wants me to talk to him. I asked confused. No, he doesn't. But the man, he won't even give us his name, said he will only talk to you. He asked for the Luna. King glanced at me. His expression was neutral, but his eyes were filled with mixed emotion. He asked for you. By name. I stared at him. What rogue could possibly know me? I'd never had any interactions with rogues, never talked to any one of them. My whole life, there had been two rogue attacks at Blood Moon, and each time I was sent down to the basement with the other women and children. And as sheltered as I had been growing up, never leaving the pack until recently, it wasn't likely my name got around easily. Or maybe it had, and I just didn't know. I was thinking of many possibilities, sorting through them in my mind as we walked to the cells. It was a small building, dirty on the outside with what used to be white brick. King nodded to the guards at the door as we walked in. I followed him down a concrete corridor with a metal door at the end. He opened it, cautioning me to watch my step as we then descended down a flight of concrete steps. The air had a chill to it the further down we went, and a pungent odor floated into my nostrils. We ended up at another metal door and I shook my head. Two doors and a flight of stairs? Yeah, great security. The smell was a lot stronger when we stepped through the door, making me gag. Sorry. Alpha ordered for the place to be cleaned ASAP. Good. I know this is where prisoners go, but that stench is unreal. I grimaced as a rat ran across my foot. I counted twelve cells as we walked, all no bigger than a closet. Each one had two rusty buckets, and I didn't ask for what they were for. I could guess. Standing at the end of the room was Jasper, Ashwell and a few warriors I didn't know the name of. 
Jasper looked angry, more angry than I'd ever seen him. His expression relaxed only a fraction when he saw me. What's going on? I asked when I reached him. He was blocking my view of the cell behind him. That mutt won't talk. Not to us. He growled. I know. King said he asked for me. Yet. But you don't have to talk to him Vi. Two of the warriors glanced between him and I, their faces suspicious. I tried to ignore it, it was unusual for a rogue to ask for the Luna by name. And we hadn't been Alpha and Luna for very long. Considering their old leaders, I could see why they'd be wary. No, it's okay. I'll talk to him. I said. We need some answers. Jasper sighed. All right. But not alone. He half turned, glaring into the cell. You hear that? She's here, but we're not leaving. Fine. The voice that answered back was rough, deep. It was not one I recognized. Jasper stepped aside, keeping close to me. I took two small steps, peering into the dark space. It was the same as all the others, two buckets, small and dirty. Unlike the others, this one held the man who claimed to know me. He was leaning against the back wall, arms crossed. Someone had given him clothes, grey sweatpants and a black tee. He was a tall guy, at least six foot, with tattoos covering his arms. His hair was short, maybe dark brown or black. I couldn't tell for sure. He wasn't thin like I'd heard rogues were. This guy was built, healthy looking. My eyes roamed up to his face. He had penetrating green eyes, very unnerving. He might have been classically handsome, if not for the scar that ran from his left temple down to his chin. I had no idea who he was. You asked for me. I questioned him. You are Violet. He replied in that rough tone. I nodded. Yes. How do you know my name? A lot of rogues know your name sweetheart. Jasper growled behind me. I crossed my arms, leaning against the wall next to the bars of the cell. Is that so? You're becoming quite famous. I raised an eyebrow. How is that? I have no dealings with rogues. He laughed. The sound was humorless. Nobody said you did. I don't understand. You've got quite the bounty on you Luna. A hefty price to take you in alive. My insides turned cold. Explain. You want me to dumb it down? All right. He leaned away from the wall, holding my stare. Someone wants you. Said they pay my buddies and I if we brought you in, alive. Obviously I don't trust that, so I got half the money up front. Who wants me? I asked numbly. And why? Now, why should I give up that information? Because it might help save your ass. He laughed again. You think I'm stupid, don't you? I'm a rogue. I attacked a pack. Either I'll spend the rest of my miserable life down here, or your boy there will do me in. He nodded at Jasper. Why not leave you with a mystery? Because, I snarled, if you don't tell me what I want to know, you'll be putting my unborn children at risk. If anything happens to them, you won't need to worry about my mate. It'll be me you deal with. You going to rough me up buttercup? He smirked. I'd love to see you try. Would you like to know who my father is? Do I care? Alpha Dimitri Varlos, of Blood Moon. His eyes flicked up to meet mine, surprise playing in them. I've been trained my entire life on how to deal with rogues. And not just interrogation-wise. You can trust every word I saw when I tell you if my children are hurt because of the information you refuse to give me, 
the rest of your life will indeed, be miserable. You're lying. He whispered. I turned to Jasper. Do you have your phone? I want to call my dad. Right here. Surprisingly, the reception down here was decent. I pulled up dad's contact and hit send. The rogue waited, obviously trying to call my bluff. Hello. Hi dad. Violet. Who else? I'm calling because we have a situation here. What kind of situation? The pack was attacked shortly after you left. Rogues. We have one alive. I'm talking to him now. What? Why are you talking to him? I filled him in quickly. He snarled so fiercely, the man behind bars flinched. This doesn't prove anything. You could be talking to anyone. He said. I pressed the video invitation. Dad's face appeared on screen, looking every inch the heartless alpha he was known to be. I turned the phone around, watching as the man's face paled considerably. Do I need to come back to Silver Moon? Dad growled. The man gulped. Does he? I asked. He looked at each of in turn, his bravado vanishing. No. I'll tell you. Violet. Yet. I flipped the phone back to myself. Remember Vincent? I glanced at our prisoner. I do. I think that punishment is a little too light for this guy though. I'll leave that up to you. Keep me informed. We will. Bye dad. I ended the call, tossing Jasper his phone. Who's Vincent? The man asked. I shrugged. Some rogue we caught at Blood Moon. He was sneaking in and playing with underage girls. So my dad decided to rid him of his appendages. All of them. He went even paler than before. If I were you, I'd start talking. Jasper ordered. All right, all right. He held up his hands. I don't know who wants you, but I do know it's a chick and she was adamant you were brought in alive. All right. Not all right. Who is she? I don't know. She never told us her name. What did she look like? Blonde, white. I scoffed. Really? Two minutes ago you were saying I couldn't do ST to you, but this girl freaked you out. Don't witches freak you out? I stepped away from the wall, staring at him to see if he was joking. She was a witch. I demanded. How do you know? At first I told her to get lost. She set one of my guys on fire, right in front of me. There was nothing left but ashes. Never touched him, only waved her hand, did she tell you why she wanted me? She only said you were important that you'd help get what she wanted. I agreed and she demanded half the money. She paid up, told us where to find you, and left. Actually, she vanished into thin air. Haven't heard from her since. My hands moved to my belly protectively. Did she know about my babies? I whispered. I don't know. She never said you were pregnant. Suddenly. The stench down here was overwhelming. I doubled over, my insides numb with a fear I'd never felt before. Fear for my children. Vomit spewed from me, controlled by that fear. That's enough. Jasper rubbed my back, helping me to stand straight when it was over. You need to go rest. No. I have one more question. I said weakly. You said I was becoming famous. What did you mean by that? We came across two other groups on our way here. Both were coming for you, so we took them out. I'm just assuming she got to more people, in any case any of us failed. Well, you did fail. Jasper snapped. 
your buddies are dead, and you're in here. Where you'll be until I decide what to do with you. I helped you. After we threatened you. He shouted. The sound echoed off the walls. We're leaving. Enjoy your stay. He spat. The rest of the audiobooks will be uploaded in the next episode. Join us on Patreon to listen to more unlimited audiobooks.